Okay, here is the, um, the video lecture for um, the substance abuse and illegal drugs that I was hoping to cover partly on Friday um, and into next week. But given that Friday is another activities day and that we're not going to meet, uh, I'll go ahead and do it this way. Uh, you do not have a shelf for this or the PowerPoint for this, so you'll have to take some notes. Um, you'll be able to pause it, obviously, and do that at your leisure, but you'll want to jot this stuff down. So... Uh, here we go. I will start off with some basic facts about drugs and society. Uh, in mental health and psychology, substance abuse and dependence problems are uh, pretty significant. Uh, they comprise a large proportion of the diagnoses uh, that we afford as mental health professionals. Um, so they're very common. I don't want to get into a whole lot of the different diagnoses and the differential diagnoses that come with labeling people with these disorders, but I want to talk a little bit more about the actual drugs and the effects that they have on people. Uh, in the U.S., millions of lives are impacted daily by drug use and abuse. Not just the people who are using the drugs, but the people around them, their family members, their brothers, their sisters, their wives, their boyfriends, their significant others, etc., etc. Billions, with a B, of dollars are spent on purchasing illegal drugs every single year. Uh, if you want to get even more to the side of that, we spend in this country approximately one billion with a B, billion dollars incarcerating inmates who are incarcerated for nothing more than marijuana possession and distribution. Also, billions of dollars are spent by our government every year to fight illegal drugs. So we know that illegal drugs are a big, big problem. Uh, a few more facts. Billions of dollars are spent every year on rehabilitating users and abusers. Uh, working in the prison system as a psychologist, I work uh, very closely with substance abuse counselors and people who are trained specifically to help people deal with substance abuse and dependence related issues. Um, so it's a big deal and a lot of money is spent on that treatment just with inmates in the system, in the incarcerated system, uh, but also outpatient and inpatient treatment facilities outside of the prison system. Um, those places command you know billions of dollars. Uh, it is estimated that illegal drug use dependence and acquisition play at least a part of 75% of all crimes in this country. So that gives you a, a big idea of what a problem it is, not just for people using it from a psychological standpoint in terms of how it affects them and others, but also how it affects your taxpayer dollars. Uh, so, Where do the problems begin? A lot of times people assume that it starts with cigarettes or it starts with marijuana, and that's not really where it starts. Uh, it does begin with the youth of society, and by youth, we're talking about pretty young. Uh, many youth begin experimenting with drugs in the medicine cabinets of their parents at home, and this is generally where it starts. They're curious, they look around the house, they find some stuff in the medicine cabinet, they use it, want to see what it does, and maybe they start kind of passing it out to their friends on the streets or maybe even at school. This is generally where drug abuse begins. Um, according to self-report surveys, try to fix the lighting here a little bit, more than half of all high school seniors have tried illegal drugs. And I know I have juniors and seniors in my class with you guys here at Sissonville. And if we were in class, I would ask you, not personally, but ask you to tell me if you thought this was a true statistic. Of all, I've taught in many, many high schools. And invariably, students will say, it's, yeah, it's more than half who have tried, all, who have tried illegal drugs. Alcohol, more than 75% of all high school seniors have consumed alcohol at least once. That does not surprise me either. And when I take polls of the different high schools, that's pretty much what they tell me. It's the same kind of thing. It's, it's that, if not more. So, it be a little bit of an issue. Uh, juvenile illegal drug use. So we're talking about, you know, early teens uh, into the latter upper part of the teens where you guys are, some of you guys just left this, this age group. What we know is from 1960 to 1970, illegal drug use with juveniles specifically increased. During the 1960s and the 1970s, you had this era of permissiveness. Uh, you had a essentially an illegal drug culture where it was kind of encouraged. It wasn't really allowed necessarily, but it was not from a legal standpoint, but it was encouraged. Continues to increase until the 1980s when Nancy Reagan, who was the wife of President Ronald Reagan, introduced this thing called Just Say No to Drugs. Um, I'm old enough to remember that being born in the early 70s. You guys may not have heard of that or the war on drugs, 
But with this campaign, illegal drug use dropped in the 80s. Now from 1990 to 2000, it's dropping slightly. From 2000 to 2010, dropping even more slightly. So we have seen a, a, a little bit of a reverse, but not enough really to say that we've made landmark changes in illegal drug use among juveniles. Uh, the drug threat in the United States, more than 35 million people used or abused illegal prescription drugs alone in 2007. Uh, in 2006, 1 million people entered public drug treatment facilities seeking to end their addiction to illegal or prescription drugs. In September of 2008, there were nearly 100,000 inmates in federal prisons convicted and sentenced for drug offenses. So in essence, 52% of all federal prisoners uh, were incarcerated uh, for drug-related offenses. So that, that gives you even some more ideas of what significant problems substance abuse can pose for individuals as well as for society. In 2009, the federal government allocated more than $14 billion, with a B, dollars for drug treatment, drug prevention, for counter-drug law enforcement endeavors, and also international counter-drug assistance. So with counter-drug law enforcement, you were talking about law enforcement officials who are paid to do nothing more than fight drugs to keep drug cartels from establishing in certain parts of this country. Uh, international counter drug assistance, uh, trying to working trying to keep people from shipping illegal drugs from one country to the next, like from Mexico to the United States or from somewhere in South America to the United States, for example. A lot of money tied up with that. Uh, in the United States, overall, drug use has decreased, but illegal drug use has increased among high risk juveniles and adolescents. And you guys are within the age group. When we talk about adolescents, you're heading from adolescence to young adulthood. So if some of this stuff is right in your wheelhouse, um, what we're talking about here. Illegal drug use is strongly linked to juvenile criminality. So go figure. The more likely juveniles and adolescents are to use illegal drugs, the more likely they are to wind up in trouble and encountering the juvenile system or the adult even, in some cases, when you're 18, the adult criminal justice system. Now, there are differences between drug use and drug abuse, and I want to kind of make those dis those distinctions here. Drug use can be used in the used uh, excuse me. Drug use can be viewed in the following ways. Usually, it begins with non-use, where in other words, you're not using it at all. Uh, but it can be seen as experimental use. I know people personally who will smoke marijuana twice a year. They're not addicted. They're not really abusing it because it, you know it's not impairing their functioning. But they'll just try it every now and then. Now, is it legal? No. Is it appropriate? Well, we could make arguments that it's not appropriate either to smoke it twice a year. But is it impairing that person's functioning in terms of work, relationships, other things? No, probably not. Medical use. We're already seeing some states like Colorado and Washington out west legalize marijuana. And we've also understand, and we could talk about this later, the importance of marijuana for medicinal purposes. Um, it has been proven to fight cancer. It's been proven to slow down the HIV virus and AIDS. Um, it's been proven to slow down the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Um, some drugs, like marijuana, is what I'm talking about here specifically. Um, so, especially with marijuana, you know, if it's used medicinally, that's not really seen as being abuse. Uh, culturally endorsed use. Some illegal drugs, such as uh, marijuana, for example, or peyote, is used in religious practices by Native Americans. Um, so that would be seen as cultural or, or religious uh, use. Recreational use. Again, this is people that just kind of use every now and then. Uh, they use, you know, they may drink alcohol twice a year, New Year's Eve and on their birthday. Uh, compulsive use. This is when someone uses, like, when they get anxious or when they get nervous or uh, when they get depressed or if, if there's a stressful situation or something of that sort. Uh, so again, use is every now and then. It's not consistent. Now, adolescent drug use, this is in your all's age group, turns into abuse when the user becomes dysfunctional. Examples of dysfunction or dysfunctional include an inability to attend school, inability to perform in school, uh, pursuing dangerous or reckless behaviors, putting self and others in danger. Uh, one of my very best friends in high school started off using drugs. He would use them every now and then, but he was still coming to school making good grades, participating in extracurricular activities along with the rest of us. But then he started abusing it. He was using it more to the point where he was missing a week of school at a time. 
his grades went down. Uh, he was driving under the influence and definitely putting himself and others in danger in the process of doing that. Uh, the dysfunction that we're talking about usually leads uh, young people to focus their entire lives on obtaining, maintaining, and using these drugs, regardless of whether it's marijuana or methamphetamine or cocaine or whatever we're talking about, alcohol, whatever. Drug abuse can also lead to the following maladaptive outcomes. Obviously, it can lead to arrest if you're caught doing it or you're caught distributing it or having it in your possession, incarceration, prosecution, and early death. So we're going to call this the end of part one uh, for uh, the substance abuse lecture for Sissonville High School. Thanks.